All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, my name's Kyle, and I'm going to be starting a film channel. So I haven't actually done a YouTube video in probably like a year. And I was like, what other better time to do it than right now during the pandemic? So today we're just gonna be shooting around, seeing what's up. It's a beautiful day out. It's around like 45 degrees here in Cincinnati. And uh, it's like the first sunny day in a while, so. I thought today would be a perfect time to go shoot some photos and I'll kind of show you guys kind of show you guys how I go about shooting film photography what you can kind of expect when it comes to film photography I guess when I first started that's kind of what got me interested was watching YouTube videos so I'm gonna kind of give you guys an insight on what I do so today we'll be shooting the Mamiya 645 Pro which is a medium format 6x45 camera um, uh, it's going to be all manual today. I'm going to be using a light meter. Um, we're going to be using Portra 400, which is kind of my go-to film, just because of how neutral it is. You can push it, you can pull it. Uh, beautiful colors, beautiful skin tones, and uh, you really can't go wrong with it. Today, we're actually going to be shooting um, some Cincinnati landscapes of the city. I got a nice place where you can see downtown pretty well. It's right along the Ohio River. And that's where we're going to be starting at. I'll probably only shoot a roll today, um, being that this is kind of my first video and I don't really know what to expect. But so we'll probably just go around and shoot one roll before it starts getting dark out. The sun goes down here like 530. So I got about got about an hour and a half to shoot. So, yeah, so we'll start, take you on the journey and uh, we'll meet you there. All right, you guys. So as I mentioned before, the camera we're going to be used is the uh, Mamiya 645 Pro, which is a 645 medium format camera, as I said earlier. So I'm pretty much just gonna show you guys how to load it. Uh, I always put it up on the top right here. And as you can see right here, there's two buttons that you can press. This one, if you hold it down, will actually take off the whole film back. And the second one will actually just release the film latch. And there you can go ahead and see the uh, film cartridge right there. And if you squeeze these two buttons, you can go ahead and pull it out just like that. And that's what we're gonna be needing today. So to load this, you're gonna have two sides. You're gonna have the take up spool and you're gonna have the starting spool. And obviously it says start right there. So what you're gonna wanna do is pull this down. You're gonna wanna go ahead and put in your, your uh, film roll, Porsche 400 in this case, and line it up with that notch, close it, and then you can just go ahead and reel it around the side. And all you wanna make sure really is that the exposed part of the film will be facing the inside of the camera where that's where the light's gonna hit the sensor, sensor or film per se. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and load it into the take up spool. Go ahead and stick it in there. Maybe if I can get it, there we go. Stick it in there. You're gonna to wanna to be, it's kinda of kind of definitely kinda of finicky at first. So once you get it in there, that's when you can start reeling. And pretty much you just wanna line up this start symbol with this line. So once you get it like that, that's pretty good. You can go ahead and then stick it right in the back of the film camera like you did. And then it should click in and you're good to go. You can go ahead and close it. And then from here on, all you pretty much need to do is turn the uh, power button from off to on, which is gonna be the white square. And then after that, all you have to do is uh, take your dark slide out and you're ready to shoot. It actually won't let you fire with the dark slide in. It's good precaution, especially for beginners if they uh, are unsure whether or not uh, they mistook a photo or something like that, but or have the settings wrong, you can go ahead and leave the dark slide in until you're ready to take that photo. And then that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and start shooting now. I also forgot to mention that when I'm going to be metering, I'm gonna be using the Minolta, <coughs> I believe it's Speed Meter 4. Um, it's probably one of the best beginner light meters. I would say it's an ambient light meter. All you do is, uh, <coughs> all you do is flash it into your subject and it will pick up the radiant light around it and give you a reading. And from there, you can adjust the f-stop, you can adjust the shutter speed, and you are good to go. That's what the interface would look like. And it'll go ahead and give you a reading, and that's that. So let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, so the first shot we're actually going to be taking is a shot of the river in downtown in the background. Also, the bridge is going to be in it. I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. This is pretty much the view I'm looking at right now, and we're gonna probably compose it so we can get the bridge and the buildings and the side involved. But uh, that's pretty much what we're gonna start out with. All right, so right now it says shoot at F8 at 250th of a second. All righty, go ahead and wind your film up to get to that first shot. And then once you're all wind up, it actually won't let you wind up anymore or go back. Go ahead and take that dark slide out. And then you should be ready to shoot. That's the first shot. Okay, so the next shot I'm gonna be taking is one straight across from the city. I'm gonna try and get the uh, the reflections of the river in the shot. And I think it'll be a nice composition. Still says 250, so I'm gonna go ahead. And it's already wound back up. We're sitting at 250. And let's see if I can get something. All right, that's shot number two. All right, so the next shot I think I'm gonna end up get taking is the uh, just of the river, um, kind of with the current, and I'm gonna get some of the contrast from the shadows and the light, and I think it'll be make for an awesome, awesome photo. Um, there's also a lot of debris in the water right now, which I think could create uh, just a nice photo showing kind of the natural side of uh, the Ohio River and how kind of gross it is, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. All right, so we're still rocking uh, F-stop 8.0. Um, let's take a reading. 8.0 says a shutter speed of 180. So we'll go to 125 because I do not have 180 on my camera. So we'll go ahead and see how that is. Might end up a little overexposed, but that should be fine. All right, shot number three. So I think the next shot we're gonna end up taking is the uh, the bridge shot. I do like the little kind of tugboat, not tugboat, uh, I'm not really sure, restaurant boat on the right-hand side. And I think that will make for a great photo. Shoot at 180. This house, right now it's reading at 350. Uh, I'm gonna shoot it at 250 and get it a little overexposed just in case. But I think it looks cool. The highlights and shadows look great. All right, that was photo number five. All right, so we're on photo number eight right now. Got two photos of the geese. Never really consider myself a, a wildlife photographer, but uh, yeah, I think that'll be sick. <laughs> Maybe I should become a wildlife photographer. I always thought it'd be interesting to work for like National Geographic or something, but who knows? Cincinnati doesn't give you the best wildlife though. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and head back. Got some shots of downtown. Downtown really... Downtown really do be looking beautiful, though, so... Honestly, might get a shot just of that. That looks insane right there, so... The colors look magnificent. I'm going to get one more photo. Nice. Yeah. 
There's people there. Gotta be quiet. I'm not trying to, uh... I've been places where people do not like their houses being fo taken photos of, pretty much. So, uh... Yeah, I gotta keep a good job of making up some excuses. Always use, like, college project or, uh... Client work, pretty much, real estate, but... Yeah. All right, so my next photo, we're on frame number 10. I'm gonna be getting this uh, alleyway. It's a nice like brick street alleyway. And I think it will make for some beautiful shots. The sunlight looks pretty good right here. So I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. Yep, and that's what we're gonna get. F8 at 90, we're gonna hit it with the 60. Cool. Um, we're gonna get one more from down low. All right, we got four more photos left. I think I'm gonna be taking a photo of that chandelier, the outside chandelier. Um, it looks like it's from like the Haunted Mansion or something. It looks old, but definitely like the rustic look with the old school wood doors and stuff like that too. So I think I might get a closer up shot of just the light and then a wider shot of the house too. Eight at 180. Really like that. All right. Might have to get one from straight up too. Yeah, I don't like that. We're gonna do 2.8 at 150. So 125. 2.8 at 125. I'm gonna go one more. There we go. That was the last photo. Go ahead and reel her up. And I'm actually going to go home and develop these later. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little rundown after I'm finishing developing the photos. So I'll meet you there. We're back. All right. So I just wanted to give a little quick overview on the Mia 645. As I mentioned earlier, I've only shot it for a couple weeks now, but I will say it is probably the greatest camera I've shot so far to this day. Great beginner option for medium format because this is actually, I'd shot a Holga before and uh, like a 70 year old twin lens reflex that took 120, it wasn't very good. Had like no options for manual uh, exposure, manual of aperture, so nothing of that sort. It's more like a toy camera. But for this thing, definitely an upgrade from that. And I was kind of skeptical at first to switch over from 35 millimeter to medium format, but I'm pretty happy I did. I was just skeptical whether I should go to a six by seven format, maybe six by six square format either. When I was first looking, I was looking at like the Bronica SQ, I was looking at the Mamiya RB67 and even some more Mamiya 645 options, but I decided to go with the Pro because I got it for a pretty good price. I got this, I got this whole model here, which came with the film back, 80 millimeter, 2.8 lens, um, the eye level viewfinder, and then it came with another film back and I got it all for around 600 bucks. And on eBay at the time, they were going for around 900. So, uh, I didn't have to pay any import fees either because I bought it in the States, so it was a pretty good deal. And honestly, you can't get 
anything better for the 645 format when it comes to photo quality. Nothing nothing has really seemed to be better at taking photos that to that size than the Mamiya 645. I don't know if the lens is matched by anything else um, until you go to like a higher higher resolution format like 6x6 or 6 7 but um, the 645 man is definitely an upgrade from 35 millimeter for sure. Uh, it may be bulkier, but it's still a pretty lightweight camera compared to my F4, my Nikon F4. It's not that much heavier. Uh, ergonomically, it's kind of it definitely takes a little bit to get used to holding it for sure. Um, it's kind of just a brick. It doesn't really have a hand. You can get a handle for it, but there's not really much you can grab onto, I guess. Um, With the strap I got, though, you shouldn't have a problem uh, carrying this bad boy around for hours, man. It's not too bad at all. And I um, was really impressed when I first got it with the image quality. If you, get, if you can get up close and nail focus, like it's some of the sharpest imagery you can get with film photography. Um, honestly, it's, it's a pretty good upgrade from 35 millimeter. So this is going to be the end of my first video. Um, I just wanted to give a little review and rundown kind of the uh, the camera I've been using and kind of uh, kind of just film photography in general. Um, a lot of people have asked me about film photography and um, I really do like educating people on how to start into film photography because when I started it was kind of something I it seemed intimidating getting into. But uh, yeah. So this is going to be the first of many videos about film. I might do a video on uh, film developing, kind of the process behind that, as well as scanning. Do videos on 35 millimeter, as well as some more behind the scenes shots and maybe some portrait work, more landscapes and nature work. Um, and yeah, just stuff in general, just like that. Uh, all in all, this kind of was my like New Year's resolution to start getting more into film and kind of being able to do more video work with film. And uh, yeah, so this is for more to come. If you don't, if you like this video, please make sure to maybe like and subscribe for more videos. Um, I do appreciate a lot of the love that I get from film photography. So, and it is a true passion and hobby of mine. I do like to do it and kind of continue and educate people on the way. Well, well thank you guys for coming in and viewing. I hope you enjoyed the video.